This is Fintech Futures at Finnovate Paul, and I'm joined by Josh Williams from Seattle Bank. How are you? Hey, doing well, thanks. Good to see you. Excellent. How have you been enjoying the conference so far? It's been great. Excellent, excellent. So uh, just to get things started, then, you want to give a quick introduction to yourself and, and what you do? Sure. Uh, yeah, Josh Williams, Chief Banking Officer and Head of Partnerships at Seattle Bank. Um, by convention, that in the United States would be a community bank, but we're somewhat unconventional in our approach in the standpoint that we have both the boutique business line that works directly with clients, uh, an asset generation business, which is more of a wholesale loan generation and management business, and then our fintech business, which is primarily driven by partner banking, which is the group I head up. Um, and uh, so we're accessing customers uh, through that channel as well. Excellent, excellent. So you spoke yesterday on a panel about competition and collaboration between financial institutions. What's, what's your take on the current landscape at the moment? Yeah, I think it's um, you know, certainly vibrant. Um, the reality is, uh, on the, um, of, in terms of how e-commerce is evolving in general, there's more demand by um, financial companies and non-financial companies alike to drive financial um, capabilities to customers in new ways, more relevant contexts. And as a result, it's just creating a lot of demand for innovation and adaptation. And um, so creating huge opportunity both for uh, those players, but also so those of us in the financial ecosystem that provide some of those solutions. Excellent. And, and how has Seattle Bank looked to approach its own digital transformation then? And have you looked to form your own partnerships? Yeah, um, well, we started a strategic um, uh, a tech strategy essentially five years ago, really looking at, at that time, how we could make sure we could provide the functionality, security, and ease of use to our, in our internal customers in the boutique bank um, that we wanted and recognize to do that, we would have to have more control of our tech stack. And in making those investments and building some of the strategic partnerships to make that possible, um, have also developed now the capability to, um, you know, not just drive new services to those customers, but start to access new segments of customers and then access channels for new business development. And, and you head up the embedding banking and banking as a service solutions to CL Bank as well. So, um, at what point did the company decide to go down this route and, and what success have you had so far with that? Yeah, um, it really was a recognition that in uh, developing that ownership of the tech stack, developing the ability, which really centers in part um, that being cloud-based in terms of supporting scale, um, open API to just uh, allow us to be more configurable and integrate more solutions, and then real time, those key elements uh, really positioned us to support a banking as a service or an embedded banking scenario. Um, at the same time, we're clearly seeing, uh, as, you know, as I mentioned, rapid uh, innovation in the space. We saw an opportunity for a bank that had those capabilities, but also understood the regulatory and the commercial context around that to go pursue that as a strategy. And the response has been really good. Um, we're seeing good opportunities, both in the deposit and loan generation space. So, I mean, with you mentioned there how quickly digital acceleration has been going over the past few years. How, how difficult is it to keep up with the, the pace of change? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it is challenging for any company in any industry, um, maybe no more so in financial services where there's legacy technology is uh, was not built to um, withstand that and uh, getting around both the security constraints that you have in financial services as well as the regulatory constraints um, has made that difficult. We were fortunate um, that the strategy we embarked upon really put us on the right side of those challenges. And so from that standpoint, well, it's a day-to-day -day challenge and struggle for our team to go out and think about where we need to go and how to get there. We have the capability to do that. And, um, and it's pretty exciting to be on a team that has that sort of, uh, I guess, tailwind at this point. Excellent, excellent. So how important is it then when, when you're collaborating to ensure that you pick a partner who kind of shares your vision and how difficult is it to, to make that work? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's hard to overstate the importance of that. Um, generally, as we're looking at partnerships, we think about three broad questions at the outset. You know, the first is it just technically possible. The second is is it legal from a regulatory standpoint, and then the third is can we all make money? Uh, and obviously, in each one of those, there's a lot of details that we're drilling into to really understand um, those elements. And what we find is um, starting out by making sure all three of those uh, variables are really on the table that we're hearing directly from leadership of a potential partner around their views around that and then really both testing out the model or testing out the proof of concept to say does it meet those parameters for each of us um, that's really where we found the ability to say that we think there's a strongly viable and durable partnership there 
And at the same time, um, usually you learn a lot about the people you're working with to just get their sense of how they think about risk, how they think about um, complexity, how they think about a regulatory framework. Um, so uh, th those are very critical to making sure you have that good alignment. And, and just to finish off then, what new kind of digital use cases are you looking forward to at the moment? Have you got anything at Seattle Bank that's in the pipeline? Yeah, um, there's a handful of things we have. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we've been able to um, drive more uh, solutions to our existing clients. So we're in the process of rolling out a new digital direct uh, customer solution that will be fully digital onboarding and service of, uh, ch uh, you know, checking accounts as well as credit products, so revolving line of credit. Um, and then we're also, uh, we'll be launching this coming fall or later this fall, uh, a new solution for savers that are looking at how to maximize their savings. And um, so we think that's gonna be a really helpful platform based on what we've seen from our customers historically as how they navigate that space. On the partnership side where we're working with um, uh, you know, again, marketplaces, fintechs, or brands that are looking to tr provide their financial or their end users financial services. Um, we've recently launched a product in the SMB space or small business space, which is more deposit focused, and then have a number of lending use cases uh, in the works that are really about driving a financing option to the point of sale that's larger than what you could handle on a sort of the BMPL concept or a traditional credit card product. So in both cases, um, um, yeah, seeing some great traction there. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for speaking with us, Just It's been great to see you. Yeah, likewise. Enjoy the show. Thanks. Thank you.